Good evening, my name is Kayla Mitchell and today I'll be discussing with you um, the life and work of Nancy Hartsock, a feminist theorist. Uh, today I'll be discussing the background and life of Nancy Hartsock, uh, her contributions to social theory through the feminist standpoint and um, feminist epistemology, uh, and the summary of, and I'll be discussing um, Lemaire's excerpt of a summary, a theory of power for women, an excerpt of uh, Hartsock's work, and then a reflection of um, the said work. Nancy Hartstock was born in 1943 in Ogden, Utah. Um, she grew up with a Methodist family in an area that was predominantly Mormon. Uh, so she said she felt, she said she felt like an outsider. Um, however, little information about um, her childhood and life outside of her um, academic life or her academia um, and professional um, her professional aspects are known. I would like to consider her a private person because again, um, no personal information could be found um, about her personal life. So she began her academic career at Wellesley College, um, a prominent women's college um, and earned her bachelor's degree in 1965. While she was a student at the college, she joined their civil rights group. Um, she graduated with her graduate degree uh, from the University of Chicago. While as, while as a graduate student, she tutored and work, worked with the Boston NAACP, um, as well as Saul Alinsky's, uh, the Woodland, Woodlawn Group, uh, which in other words, two. Uh, two was a um, organization created, an activist organization created um, to help the working poor and jobless. It was an attempt to reach the newcomers in the community um, and bring them together as neighbors. Um, shortly after, she marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, when he brought the civil rights movements to North. And in, it, in his attempt to show that the civil rights movement was not only a problem in the South, um, but needed to be, um, but needed also to be demonstrated in the North. Um, in 1972, she earned her PhD in political science from the University of Chicago. Um, she later, joined the University of Mich Michigan Political Science Department where she was the first female um, to be hired into the position. She felt that this was a less than exemplary job, um, but she didn't go into more detail about that in an interview uh, that I read, um, but then joined the University of Washington in 1984 with their Department of Political Science and Women's Studies. Um, today, the department is now known as the uh, Department of Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. Upon her retirement from the University of Washington, um, she was honored with uh, the creation of the Nancy Hartstock Prize for Best uh, Graduate Paper in Feminist Theory. The purpose of the prize was to honor her intellectual legacy um, through her contributions uh, of feminist theory and uh, political activism. Outside of her um, academic career with University of Washington, she founded the Center for Women and Democracy with three other women um, within, within Seattle, Washington. She was uh, the founding director from 1999 to 2000. <clears throat> the mission of the Center of Women for Democracy is a community of women leaders united to transform society 
by building and leveraging the power of women's leadership locally and globally. As we see, she, um, even outside her numerous works, um, she is striving for um, the empowerment of women and bringing equality around the world. Um, in 1993, she was awarded the Mentor of Distinction Award from the American Political Science Association's Women's Caucus. <clears throat> Uh, Nancy Hartsock died March 19th, 2015, after a 30 year battle with breast cancer. Um, she left behind uh, her four cats, Stokely, Annie, Chan, and Emma, along with other um, feline friends. Um, her co workers and peers stated that she loved to travel, um, and her home was adorned with artwork from her travels, and she could also be considered a foodie. So her contributions to social theory. So I'm providing a, a, a quote that I took from an interview uh, she did in 1996, which I feel is um, very much the basis of um, her standpoint of, a, of the feminist standpoint theory and the women's movement. So many people are excluded from consideration as part of the feminist movement because they don't label themselves feminist, but they are women consciously working to empower themselves and other women. I think they should be considered part of the women's movement. So I believe what she's saying is you don't have to designate yourself a feminist to be part of this movement and um, empower others, whether they're women or um, part of another marginalized group. So this leads to, you know, to back to her many published works. Um, her most influential writings were Money, Sex, and Power Towards a Feminist Historical Materialism. Um, the feminist standpoint in developing the ground for specifically feminist historical materialism. These are her most cited um, published works. However, uh, she wrote many other essays um, and articles um, about the feminist standpoint theory and um, political theory. She also contributed to um, the to feminist epistemology and the, again, the feminist standpoint, her feminist, feminist standpoint theory. <clears throat> so what is the feminist standpoint theory? Um, it is rooted in, Mar her theory is rooted in Marxist um, thinking. So she took the bourgeoisie and proletariat um, designations and applied them to feminine and masculine qualities and argued against the um, inequality between the two groups. Her feminist standpoint theory um, as a result opened up doors um, to other marginalized groups um, other than women. Um, to be more specific, a non-marginalized group are, um, in her terms, um, white European man, men, um, and the marginalized are women, people of color, um, the elderly, and individuals with disability, children, you know, any group who is at a disadvantage and she feels are not equally representative in our society. So um, the feminist standpoint theory has three principles. The first is that knowledge is socially situated, um, that marginalized groups are culturally positioned in ways 
that make it possible to have a voice and facilitate political decisions rather than the non-marginalized. Um, and then the third principle would be um, focusing on power relations and uh, understanding the lives of the marginalized to improve the lives of the non-marginalized. So <clears throat> the feminist standpoint theory has helped um, different organizations such as social services, education, and political science. Um, within social services, um, they have utilize the standpoint theory um, and have been able to ask questions and witness new connections of social relations between marginalized um, peoples as a result of um, research based on Hart Sock's feminist standpoint theory. So as we see, it's, it's, used in many different areas. So her published works, as I mentioned before, are um, various. Uh, her, one of her most published works is The Feminist Standpoint, Developing the Ground for a Specifically Feminist Historical Materialism. Um, her focus within this works is to use Marxist theories to examine the institutional sexual division of labor. Um, the, the work allows academic and political thinkers to question about these, about those considered marginalized. Um, and then money, sex, and power was her first um, work in the building block for the feminist standpoint th theory. Later writings such as um, the feminist standpoint revisited um, supported her original theory um, and strengthened um, her main points. So <clears throat> moving on to Lemaire's um, excerpt of Art Sock's essay, A Theory of Power for Women. Her, this essay was a response to Mikhail Foucault's um, A Theory for Women. Uh, she's arguing against postmodernism theorists um, in that they say, um, in that they say that they're theories contribute to the world, which she feels in fact are empty and void. And that is what, that is, what is dangerous um, for the marginalized to, um, to listen to because they don't offer any kind of substance to creating a new theory of power that would contribute to society and equalizing um, their, um, their status. Um, she uses an analogy from the colonizer and the colonized. The colonized would be the marginalized groups and the colonizer would be the non-marginalized. Um, she makes a point um, to offer suggestions at the end of her essay that in order to create a theory of power, um, she, in order to create a theory of power, several steps need to be taken first. Um, so the first step, excuse me. The first step would be to um, recognize that we can be the makers of history, as well as the objects of those who have made history. Um, the second is that we must build a basis of knowledge and conversation 
about changing um, our methodology, method, method, our methodology. Um, so meaning we need to understand um, the status or the, the non-marginalized um, in order to make a difference in, with marginalized groups. The third idea um, is to set limits of understanding uh, the world and social relations um, and in the realm of domination, but will allow the future to be changed for the marginalized. So we need to understand that there, we, we can't go from A to Z very quickly. We need to um, be able to know where those stopping places are before our ideas and our views are not seen or not heard. Um, the fourth would be understanding the how power is gained and recognized through struggle and, and hard work. Um, this is based off of um, Marxist thinking. Marx believes that for the um, proletariat to gain a foothold, they have to work hard to, um, to see the, the, I guess the advantages of their um, struggle. Again, that's going to be the same for the marginalized. They have to work hard in order to see um, any kind of um, power gained. And then lastly, the marginalized must truly understand um, the oppressed and, and what it means to be oppressed before any kind of political change can be taken. <clears throat> So as I said before, she's offering a change, a concrete change and steps that can be taken where she feels other um, postmodernism uh, theorists do not. So as I stated before, she recognizes the framework um, for before new development can be um, before the new development of a, of a theory. Um, and she focuses on the recognition of the need for new theory by making the connection between history and modernity um, and understanding the view of women historically or even other marginalized groups in this case. Something that I feel that could be a weakness within the article is um, that she's proposing in my eyes, that she's recreating the wheel. She's proposing a brand new theory besides what other theorists have already created. Um, if these theorists, theorists have created a theory and she's proposing um, certain steps, then why not, um, then why not support those other ideas with her supposed steps. Um, I, I feel that she's just going to be, it's just going to be a, a, a constant motion instead of just working off of what has already been created. Um, I also feel that if her goal is to reach a global audience, that she doesn't fully, she's not fully recognizing um, that, um, that an Eastern society um, is still very much um, sexist. Uh, I live in South Korea with my spouse um, and before I didn't realize before moving to an Asian country the separation between men and women. Um, typically a man won't speak to a woman um, unless they're with, or they won't speak to a woman if they are with their spouse or significant other. Um, women are seen as objects. Uh, they don't recognize that there is um, 
a problem with rape in their country. Um, and also women are seen as in the kitchen um, during large celebrations or really any celebration like Chu Sock, their Thanksgiving, um, women are cooking in the kitchen while men are uh, relaxing in the living room. Um, at this time of year, women will go out and purchase a cast on the economy and then pretend that they are injured so they do not need to um, support um, the dinner or, or provide for the dinner because it's tiring. Um, I think that this area could be stronger and if she's gonna provide a framework for um, building new theory, then maybe provide a framework on how to change, you know, the, the thinking of <laughs> um, an Eastern civilization. So we see that Nancy Hartstock has her, her contributions to social theory and feminist epistemology um, reaches far and wide. Um, but and it continues to influence um, different organizations um, even, even today. Um, one thing um, I want you to reflect upon is, can you recognize the use of the feminist standpoint theory today? Can you see it in the news um, or in social, social media um, posts or news, um, news articles? Uh, the quote provided below was um, in Lemaire's text, and he believes that this is one of the most important um, questions in um, feminist social theory. So why is it just when so many of us who have been silenced begin to demand the right to name ourselves, to act as subjects rather than objects of history, that is just then the concept of subjecthood becomes problematic. So I would take a moment to let this sink in and see if you can't recognize um, Nancy Hartstock's contributions to our um, to social theory and social sciences today. Thank you. <laughs>